1 Kings 17 chapter verses 1 through 7. And here, beloved, is where you'll find these words. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Yeah. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. Yes, he for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. Yes, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. Yes. And he drank of the brook. Yes. Beloved, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. Because there had been no rain in the land. In the land. I want to talk to you from this subject. I'm good. Yeah. That's it again. I'm good. I'm good. That's it right there. That's it right there. Yeah. yeah Brook dried up, but I'm, I'm good. Beloved, if you have not been challenged in your spiritual faith, within these last couple weeks, you have not been living right. The mere fact that a couple Sundays ago we made the declaration that we are good in the face of the enemy caused him to step up his attack so voraciously that many have called my phone saying, Pastor, this has been the toughest week that I've had in a long time. I was sitting down talking to Sister Rhodes, and we were going through resolution after resolution after resolution after resolution after more resolution, then another resolution. And I said, Sister Rhodes, how many folk have actually died? Beloved, within these last couple weeks, we've had close to eight to nine folk that have left here to go to be with the Lord. And a lot of you are sitting in the seats right now and you were directly affected by the passing of one of those individuals who we're writing a resolution for. And I need you to understand today that no matter how cute the words on the resolution are, no matter how beautiful the ceremony may be, no matter how much trouble you think is going to come after the services because the families act this way and that way, I need you to walk away with the understanding that you are good. You know why you're good? Because the Bible says to be absent from the body to is present. to be present with the Lord. And my question has always been, who wouldn't serve a God who can make you absent and present at the very same time? That's the kind of God that we serve. So because of that, guess what? You're good. As we look at the text today, Elijah is a prophet, an incredible man of God. And yet at the height of one of his biggest triumphs, he feels hopeless, helpless, and terrified. God has just used Elijah to defeat 450 prophets of Baal in an epic display of power and glory. And on top of that, God has brought rain to the land after three years of drought. Now, this is Elijah, and he's at the top. He's at the pinnacle of his prophetic career. He has just defeated 450 prophets of Baal just him and his God. And now all of a sudden, uh, Baal, uh, and not Baal, but Jezebel has told Elijah that if you don't get out of here, by this time tomorrow, the same fate that my prophets face will be the same fate that you're going to face in your life. So here that we see that Elijah has started to run from out of the presence of God because he thinks he's getting away. 
I wish I had about three or four folk that realized that no matter how far you run, you can never get away from the God of Israel. And I can say a lot of us in here have tried to run because I know I put on my best Air Force Ones and tried to get away from God. But guess what? At the end of the day, God is everywhere all the time. And because he is, guess what? Now I'm good. Here we come to find out that God doesn't tell Elijah uh, off for feeling like he's lost the battle. But, and he also doesn't pluck Elijah out of the tricky situation. Instead, he gives Elijah what he needs in that moment, food and rest. And family, I'm going to just stick a pin there for a couple quick minutes. How many of you know in order to deal with your situation, sometimes all you need is some food and some rest? You sitting there crying, go to sleep and eat something. Or eat something and then go to sleep. Okay. Because you're going to be good. You sitting there worrying and fretting and you're terrified, you're horrified, you're petrified. Get you something to eat and then go to sleep. That's right. That's if right. you say that God is the God of your salvation and you trust in God, then get you something to eat and take your tired self to sleep. And by the time you wake up, everything going to be all right. Y'all know when I was young, I used to get in trouble. I was the youngest of all three of the siblings. And, you know, the third sibling already knew how to get out of trouble because we watched the first two knuckleheads stay in trouble. So if that was you, just raise your hand. And, and so what I would do is I would do my dirt, and then I would have my hands because I figured if I had my hands long enough, by the time I go to sleep and wake up, everything's going to be okay. One, one day I set the bathroom on fire. I was a little pyromaniac, Kimmy. I thought, I thought that if you threw matches under the garbage can and just put the can over the garbage, then the garbage would be okay. But apparently fire don't work that way. I messed around, Brittany, and I, I, I said, well, I'm going to just go to sleep. Couldn't sleep too long because by the time I hit the bed, I could hear the fire coming from out the bathroom, and I was able to get in there and quench it just enough, and then I went on and went to sleep. And you know what? I was good when I woke up because I blamed it on my brother. <laughs> y'all missed the whole thing. You missed the whole thing because y'all the one or the two older than the youngest that was getting blamed for all the stuff that was going on. But see, I was smart enough to know by the time I get wake up, mama going to be home, and I'm going to be good. This happens twice while Eliza regains his strength and we can imagine a better outlook on life. He travels to Horeb, the mountain of God, and waits for the Lord to pass by. What's interesting here is that God doesn't tell Eliza the full plan when he's feeling scared and overwhelmed in the desert. Instead, God waits until he's ready to take the next step. Have God ever done that in your life? Didn't reveal the whole plan to you? But he just showed you just enough? Do you know why God can't show you everything, friend? Because if he shows you everything, you're going to mess it up. Because you're going to try to complete the story for him. God said, I'm the author and the finisher of your faith. I don't need you putting in your little red pen in your comments so you can try to make it better. All I need you to do is follow me. God will show you just enough so that you depend on him. Not like man who gives you just enough to count on him. God shows you just enough so you'll have enough faith in him. Oh, if y'all will wake up, y'all can tell the difference. There's a difference between when God gives you a little and when man gives you a little. When man gives you a little, man wants you to keep begging him and begging her for more. But when God gives you a little, he's saying, I'm giving you just enough for right now because what I got coming for you is going to be greater later. You're going to be good. I can't give it to you all right now because it might just blow your mind. Thank God that he gives it to us a little bit at a time. Thank God for my little bit. I don't want man giving me no little bit of, don't be giving me, man, get out of here. People be looking at me like, that ain't crazy. 
crazy. I'm telling the truth. And if you hear what I say, you'll understand. There's a big difference. Man gives you just enough. So you have to keep depending on him. If you love me, give me enough so I can thrive. Not just survive. You ever been with somebody and you knew they had more than enough to turn your life around, but they only wanted to give you just enough so you got to keep coming back begging? You, 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 and every time you turn around, you got to beg for more. If you got a surplus of something I, and you say that you're close to me, I shouldn't have to beg you for anything. But what God is showing you is that you shouldn't be counting on man in the first place. God is saying that that, that that same little bit they've given you, I'll multiply times 2,000 when you trust me. We got to stop trusting in man and start trusting and believing in God. How often are we terrified and overwhelmed about what might come next due to what we've reached in the breaking point and things seem hopeless and all of a sudden those things never even come? I tell you all the time, don't waste your today focusing on tomorrow because tomorrow might not come and you've lost your opportunity to celebrate today. Y'all talk back to me. Elijah's story tells us that God is our comforter and provider. Even in the darkest places, he knows what we need. Sometimes a literal snack and a nap is all we need. Just a snack and a nap. Man, you give me a just, I don't even need the whole chicken wing. Just give me the third piece sometimes. All right, I'm lying. I need the whole. I need the whole box. I need a, I need a six piece with all drumsticks. We got some flats, folks, in the house. Y'all so silly. Elijah knows the story of that God is our comfort and provider and all you need is a snack and a nap. And we can trust he sees everything bigger than we see. Though we might feel lost or unsure of what to do next, God reveals his plans to us when we need to know them. And when he shows them to you, guess what? You're good. Elijah has stood before the king of Israel and delivered the message of judgment that God had given him. Now God commanded Elijah to hide himself away. It seems to me that God would want to keep Elijah in the face of Ahab. However, God said, I don't need you in the face of Ahab. I need you in my face. God ways are not our ways. You see, God always has a plan and his plan was to transform Elijah from Elijah the Tishbite uh, to Elijah, the man of God. And the only way that God can get you to change is he has to get you out of the face of others and he has to get you right in his face. And I know I got about three or four folk in here that God had to remove from out of the presence of the crowd in order to get them right in front of God so that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ever ask. Oh, I wish I had about four folk that can remember when God removed you from everybody around you. Everyone that was around you, God removed you because he knew you couldn't hear him because you was listening to them. And when God got a message for you, God don't mind taking you out of your comfort zone, placing you somewhere where you think you can't survive. And then all of a sudden, God shows up right on time with the right plan for the right situation at the right moment with the right outset for the right income. You are good because God is going to show up. Tell your neighbor he showed up. I'm sitting around a bunch of folk that has never experienced God. I can look at your face and tell you've never experienced God. But for the three or four of you that has truly experienced God, 
How about you give him a round of applause and say thank you for showing up? for showing up when, when when everybody counted me out thank you uh, for showing up when everybody turned their back on me thank you for showing up when everybody counted me out thank you uh, for showing up when they doubted me thank you for showing up when they lied on me thank you for showing up he's the God that will show up thank you God my God He'll show up, Minister McGee. You know he'll show up, will you? Take you out of your comfort zone. Put you somewhere where folk doubted you. But you can look at the enemy and say, you should have killed me when you had a chance. But because I'm still here. Jezebel after me, the God who I serve has kept me in front of his face. And I don't care how bad it may look, God keeps you in front of him so he'll see which direction he needs to take you. The word, my God, the word, the word Cherith, the word Cherith, the word itself means to be cut off. He, he sent them to a place so that he could be cut off. He, he, he sent him, he put him in a place that he, he got consecrated and segregated at the same. He cut him off. And too many of you right now, you mad because God cut you off. What you didn't know was that person you was with was getting ready to destroy you, getting ready to tear your life from upside down. And God said, before they do that to you, I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to cut you off. you off. You know why I'm going to cut you off? Because when I cut you off, I'm going to put you in a place that can't nobody else get to. Because I need to make sure that your mental capacity is in good tact. I need to make sure I fill you up spiritually. See, God has a way of cutting you off, sitting you aside, and then restoring you. Do I got about four folk that have been restored by the goodness of the Lord? Tell your neighbor, I've been restored. I've been, <laughs> I've been restored. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm good, I'm, I'm good. I know I'm, I know you might think I'm in a bad place, but I'm good. You, you might think I lost my resources, but I'm good. <laughs> you might think I'm about to lose my mind, but I'm good. <laughs> you might think I'm getting ready to go crazy, but I'm not, I'm good. <laughs> I'm in this place all by myself. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Trust me when I tell you I'm good. See, you think, you think a place of darkness means bad because we associate anything with black or darkness as being bad. But how many of you know sometimes that the only way that God can give you light is he puts you in dark places? The only way you're going to see me if I put you in a dark place. And I'm not talking about just spiritually. I'm talking about psychologically, emotionally. And guess what? I'm talking about literally. I'm going to take you off and I'm going to put you in a room this big. And it ain't going to be nobody but me and you. But by the time you come out of this, by the time you make your way out, by, by the time you spend some time with me, it might be one day, it might be one week, it might be one month, but when I get through with you, uh, 
That's why the songwriter says, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. One, 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 my God, oh my God. One of the hardest lessons the child of God will ever learn. I know. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. One of the hardest lessons the child of God will ever learn is that God must send you to Cherith before he can use you for his glory. He must hide you away and cut you down so that his image may be more clearly revealed in you. Just as the silversmith heats the silver and skims off the dross until he can see his image in the silver, so God will work in our lives to bring us to that place where his image is seen in us. Tell your neighbor God wants to see himself in you. No, tell your other neighbor God wants to see himself in you. Now point to yourself and say God wants to see himself in me. Ezekiel 22 and 20 says, as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it, so will I gather you in mine anger and in mine fury, and I will leave you there, and I will melt you. Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof. And ye shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. God is saying like lost pieces of silver, metal, and gold that don't have no value that you can be found laying in the dirt. And that's what most of us was for the most of our lives. We were equivalent to empty pieces of lucre, empty pieces of lead and metal. But all of a sudden, God saw value in your vessel. He picked you up. He placed you in the midst of the fire. And while you were in the midst of the fire, the God that we serve, he just kept <sighs> depression, <sighs> sadness, <sighs> death. God kept you in that fire and he kept blowing on it till it got hotter and hotter. But all God was trying to do was remove the unnecessary pieces that kept you covered filthy and dirty. God says by the time you come out of the fire, you won't look like the same way you did when you went in. Tell your neighbor, thank God, I don't look like what I've been through. I've been through the fire. I've been through the fire. I've been through the fire. But I made it out. I made it out. I made it out. I made it out all right. I've been through the fire. But I made it. Touch three folk and say, I made it, 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 I made it. I made it, I made it. You can't go from here to here without staying in the fire. You want to go from this side to that side. God said you lost here and you lost here. You didn't win until you got in the fire and stayed there. Anybody ever come out of the fire? Anybody ever come out of the fire? <sighs> yeah. I'm good today. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. 
Yes, I'm good. I'm good today <laughs> because God is good. Yeah. I don't, man, I can't even get through this thing. I can't even get through this thing. Just, just, just tell your neighbor if you, if you just get through it, just, just get through it because the goal is to come out on the other side. You, I just got to get through it because I just need to get out on the other side of this. I, I, but I got to go through it. I, I can't just stay over here. I, I got to go through the thing that hurts me the most. I, I, I got I to gotta find a way to, to get through it so that I can come out. Because when you come out, you will be as pure gold. God only wants to see himself in you. But sometimes you just got to keep fighting your way through. Do I got anybody here today that don't mind going through? Tell your neighbor, I've been through the fire. I've been through the flood. I've been through the rain. But God brought me out. I'm good. I'm good. Yes, I'm good. I'm good today. I made it out. I made it out all right. I made it, I made it, I made it. I made it. If you made it out, why don't you stand up and give God some glory? If you made it out. wrong with praising the Lord. I 
I dare you to give God about 25 seconds of a praise break. I'm good, church. I'm good. I'm good. I couldn't, I couldn't finish the text, but we good. Go home and read it for yourself because you good. You better make that declaration over your life that you are good. Let's give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Hallelujah. God is truly, truly in the blessing business. Beloved, I, and I, I'm just be very honest. I wasn't ready to let that thing go today. And so, so, so Lord, forgive me. Holy Spirit, forgive me. I dare not quench the Holy Spirit. But there was some yokes being broken in this house today. Some expiration dates are coming. Some expiration dates are coming. Some expiration dates are coming. And, and the enemy, the enemy knows the enemy knows that his fate is sealed, that his day has come, and that the people of God have been declared as good. So, Father, we thank you for putting us on the threshing floor and for separating us for pruning us. The threshing floor is meant to separate. Then what God does after he separates, he then dedicates back unto himself. And so once you have been pulled away from something or someone, God is saying, I'm getting ready to bring you back to me now. And the reason we struggle with these kind of messages because we just don't want to let go of what we know God has not given us in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you for dying on Calvary, for paying a debt that we could not pay. But on that third day morning, Lord God, you rose with all power in your hand. And because of that, we are now declared as good. 
Father, I know we're good today. In Jesus' name, amen.